Hi, my name is Vinny Feig. I'm a worker owner here at uh, Backline. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about how we do our vinyl cutting uh, here at Backline. At Backline, what we use is um, for a cutting lathe is an old Reco cut Challenger. This was made in Long Island um, in the mid 1950s. And uh, it made its way to Europe at some point, and it was refurbished in Poland, and that's where we bought it from. Um, you'll see on the lathe, the front part is an amp. So the sound, uh, it was built to be kind of this all-inclusive uh, unit. So it has two microphone jacks, um, an amp, uh, some basic bass and treble um, switches, and then uh, had the ability to record with this arm here. So you'll see when we start recording, this goes across and this cutter head, instead of uh, listening to a record like you would on a record player, is actually cutting into blank plastic and setting the grooves. Um, it also has the ability to uh, listen to the record right on the record player and the case uh, that it came with that would go over this uh, is a speaker. So when we're cutting, you'll hear it, um, the music playing from the case. Uh, we currently at some point in the line, the motor that was in this unit uh, broke or was replaced. Um, so this is our, our uh, power unit and motor that's gonna spin the table. So what is a lathe? Uh, Lays were developed in the turn of the 20th century uh, when we started to record on discs instead of drums. Uh, Lays are a way to record sound directly onto a disc, and then there are techniques to take this disc um, and make other discs, and that's how you make vinyl records. Um, in the United States, we didn't have magnetic tapes until after World War II. So any music... Um, done pretty much in the first half of the 20th century in the United States, all those great jazz records, all those great blues records, all those great folk records, and the Lomaxes going down to Mississippi and recording all the lead belly and all that stuff was done on a machine similar to this. Um, and even today and, and after the development of magnetic tapes, the first step in uh, a process to make vinyl records involves a lathe. Even if you're pressing a record, you're still using a lathe at the beginning, um, albeit a lathe that's much bigger and more expensive than this, that uh, can make that first copy. And then from there, they uh, goes through a whole pre-production process to create the stamp. And then instead of cutting onto a record that's already been made, they have vinyl glue and they stamp the record and um, they ship it out. The advantage of stamping records is it's a great mass production process. So it's very efficient. Once you have your stamp, you can make records in a minute or two, and each record is gonna be pretty much exactly the same because it's that stamp. Uh, the downside is you have to go through that whole pre-production process, and that's why many uh, record presses have minimums of 250, 300 plus uh, records that you need to buy um, for them to do an order. The advantage of a lathe, like the one we're using today, is that we're gonna be cutting live onto the record as the music's playing. Um, so we can do, we don't have a minimum. We can make one copy of a, of a record. The downside is there's no efficiency um, so the amount of time it takes to make the first record is the same amount of time it takes to make the 250th record. Um, so in that case, doing a press record would be better, but for a small batch records, uh, this is a great process. Okay. Let's talk about the production process here. So we're going to get a digital file. We're going to put it on our computer and we're going to process that file with a re inverse IRAA curve. So basically uh, what is going to happen as the disc is being cut is the base grooves 
are going to go deeper and make a wider um, cut than the treble and the higher parts, which will be more shallow. So what they developed in the 1950s was a, um, a curve that basically took out, took down the lower parts when cutting and increase the higher parts so that you can fit more music onto a disc. Um, if they never did this, then a 33, uh, instead of playing 23 minutes per side, uh, might only play 15 or, or even shorter depending on the bass grooves. So the, the first thing we're gonna do on the computer is we're gonna take down the bass and we're gonna boost the treble. Then every single record player has a, uh, Phono, like in their preamp, has the curve doing the opposite. So they're going to boost the bass and they're going to decrease the treble. So when it's playing back while it's cutting, it's going to sound very odd uh, because it's going to sound much higher and you're not going to hear any bass. Uh, but don't worry, this will be corrected uh, in playback. So once we have it uh, set up on the computer, we run the music through a compressor. Um, and the compressor is just a very light compression. Basically what we're trying to avoid are any pops in the music, any snare hits, any of those P's that are going to kind of throw off our needle a little bit. Um, the machine we're using, since it was made in the 1950s, it is a mono machine. Um, some of those uh, more advanced production techniques that were developed later, uh, this machine really can't handle. So we're trying to just compress it a bit to have a smoother uh, playback when we're recording. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna spray the disc with an anti-static spray. Static is our enemy here in the record cutting process. So at every step of the way, we are gonna try to eliminate static. So we're gonna stop sitting on this chair and uh, constantly kind of be grounding ourselves uh, to eliminate static. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on uh, the motor and we're gonna start heating up the disc. Uh, this lamp will get the disc around 110 degrees, uh, which will make it easier for the stylus to cut into the disc and uh, make the cut. And so right now we have this heat lamp on. It's gonna heat the disc up to about 110 degrees which will make it a lot easier to cut into and uh, will be better on the stylus. Uh, here is our cutter head. So uh, this bar here is moving at the speed of the, the table. So this bar here is moving at the speed of the plate. And as this moves, the cutter head is moving at the same speed as um, the record we're cutting. So today we're cutting at 33. So uh, the cutter head is moving at 33. And then right here, um, which is probably a little hard to see, there's a stylus. And the stylus is gonna be cutting in to this blank disc. And uh, basically it has uh, speakers in this head. And the speaker is gonna play uh, the song that we're doing today, which is uh, Otis Redding's My Lover's Prayer. And as the song plays, uh, the stylus moves a little bit, and that is going to be what's going to cut the grooves um, on this, uh, on this uh, piece of vinyl. So we're going to check our uh, temperature. So we are at about 110, uh, where the, the cutter head's going to go. So I have our song queued up and uh, we're gonna start this out. So um, let's move it into position. Then we put it down. You can hear the speaker, so this is the music that uh, is being cut directly onto the cutter head right now. So this is music that uh, I previously bought on iTunes, so we can do, we can cut any original music or um, things bought on a service like iTunes, uh, HD tracks, uh, or Bandcamp. 
Uh, we can't cut anything from a streaming service or bootlegs um, for legal reasons. But this is a great way to put, today we're doing a 7 inch, uh, but it's a great way to put some of those old playlists um, and mixtapes onto a piece of vinyl. So, let me move it a little bit closer and see uh, what I can... So, as you can see, we can uh, zoom in a little bit better and focus it. That is the stylus, and it's cutting right into the piece of vinyl, and this is being done live. Um, so, this song is being cut directly onto the record. And the record is, uh, this is going to be a one-off. This, uh... Okay, and now uh, song's wrapped up. So we bring the needle, the stylus back up first, bring the cutter back, head back over it, move this out of the way. We shut off our, our uh, motor and our light, and then uh, let's play it back. And now we're playing. As you can hear, uh, this is the record we just made. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, 